This video is already off to a really good start. So I read a lot of books. And generally, I'm a nice person. That's not true. But generally, I read books that I like. But every once in a while, there's a book that you just can't stand. And you can't understand how other people think it's good. And so today, we are going to see how the other half lives in their sucky taste. So I have made a list of 10 books that I have given one or two stars. I didn't have enough one star books. I think we're going to talk about all of the books that I gave one star. And I think there are only five of them. Because it has to be truly heinous for me to only give it one star. We do have some heinous ones though, don't, don't you fret. So I should probably start recording. I have pulled up my Goodreads here and we're just gonna go through, there'll be 10 of them. So I've only pulled out the ones that I think will be funny to talk about. Cause like you see Bear and the Nightingale on here, I give two stars, but like that's not gonna be fun to talk about. One that will be fun to talk about though, is God Game. Did I introduce this? Today I'm going to be reading five star reviews of books that I gave one slash two stars and I'm very excited and a little tipsy. So God Game by Danny Toby is about a bunch of nerds who try to do a revenge. Black Mirror-esque vibes. <sighs> sure. It all begins in good fun when the Vindicators. First of all, Vindicators? Like doesn't that just sound Cringy? That feels cringy to me. A group of teenage gamer hackers enter the game. Or does dying in the virtual world really mean death in real life? Like, this sounds like a joke. This sounds like a parody of a parody. It's wild. I'm not a huge sci-fi reader. Okay, yeah, there's lots of good sci-fi you could read. That's not this. It felt more like a thriller. I, I mean, I guess it felt like a thriller, but like a really bad thriller kind of like um that karen m mcmanus book you know the one i'm talking about one of us is lying i know what i'm talking about so loud the characters were well done they absolutely were not they were all just nerds and then there was the girl nerd. there was the black one there was the girl one they were not well fleshed out even a little bit you find yourself thinking just one more chapter i think this is the book too that had like a hundred chapters in a 400 page book so like yeah you could do one more chapter because the chapters are all four pages that's not a compliment is it even virtual i guess it is virtual reality but you don't like have the goggles it's augmented reality i know things i know more than these people this is a game about friendship family loyalty ethics and morality it's simple really then again maybe it's not i mean it is about all of those things but not good in truth there's nothing simple about the god game i disagree i thought it was extremely simple i think it is a ya book but it it felt young ya despite trying to be edgy uh, one star my kind of girl but we're not here for you today we're only here for these five stars in the god game when you win all your dreams come true but if you lose you die that sounds like a joke Whatever. but be careful if you don't do what's asked you get blacks points and that could mean getting hurt or worse like i highly recommend this book for those looking for an exciting entertaining suspense and thriller read that's so many adjectives and all of them are lies Okay, I'm done with that one. Let's talk about The Cactus by Sarah Haywood. This is a romance. I didn't like it. This was when I was trying to read all of the Reese Witherspoon book club picks and then I realized her taste is all over the place so I just kind of gave up. First one, one star, good to know. It's always good when you have to like scroll a bit to get a five star. First five star, I really loved this one. Great, good for you. It seems like you're the only one. Okay, here like halfway down the page, we get a five star. Bloody brilliant, it starts off a bit like Bridget Jones and ends a bit like Four Weddings. No, but the problem is it's not fun. So I didn't think this could top Eleanor Oliphant. It kind of gives Eleanor Oliphant vibes but Eleanor Oliphant was meant to be literary fiction 
and this is meant to be romance. They have very different vibes. Witty in that intimable in inim in inimitable. Inimitable? Am I dumb? Inimitable. 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 Good, so good or unusual as to be impossible to copy. Oh, like unimitatable? Inimitable. Inimitable. <sighs> but by saying inimitable British way, you're like categorizing it. So then it's not inimitable, Ruthie. Always a reluctant five-star raider. You should have held out more, Ruthie. I have become a fan of books that, cre that feature quirky main characters. She's so quirky just for the sake of being quirky and not, I think she has like OCD and really bad anxiety. She's not quirky. She like has a bunch of mental health problems. <laughs> It's, it's bad. And also, she's extremely unlikable. I feel like to be quirky, you have to be kind of likable. Like me. I am done with that one. Let's talk about Pride and Prejudice and Mistletoe. Did I give this book two stars? Let's, let's remedy that. It, she is a one. She's a one. <sighs> I didn't hate my experience reading it. That's true, but it was my worst book of last year. So it has to be one star. It just has to be. Okay, let's find a five star review. Are there any five star? There we go. Oh yes, yeah, so, um, well, you know it's a Pride and Purchase retelling. It's called Pride and Purchase and Mistletoe. You're smart, you'll, you'll pick it up. This is a great twist by placing us entirely in Darcy's head. I disagree. I think romances should always be dual perspective. And that's all there is to say. Should this be on? Probably, right? That seems better. Hey. Um, there are more twists and turns in terms of the romance, but that was a necessary change for 2017. No. No, it wasn't. You can still have like a very point A to point B romance. 2017 doesn't need twists. It needs like verbal consent. <laughs> That's the only thing we need. Quite enjoyable and definitely recommend to anyone who loves a good holiday romance. I don't even think it was very holiday-y. You know, Holidays is the last probably um, holiday romance I read and they have scenes of like building snowmen and picking out a Christmas tree and stuff like that. This doesn't have anything. I think they go to a banquet that like is for Christmas, but truly could have happened any time. Corey knows what's up. We're not here for you today, Corey. Wow, this is, <laughs> this one's rough. This is, are we out? Are we out of five star reviews? We're out of five star reviews on the first page and we are not gonna delve into a second page. This is the most recent read we have on this list. Hench by, I'm gonna get it, Natalie Zena Walshots. Yeah. This one I give two stars. This has a 4.14. That's crazy happy. What does, I, I just wanna check again. Pride and Precious and Mistletoe has a 2.66. That's so sad. I'm so sorry. We're not here to talk about that. We're gonna talk about Hench. The villain origin story I've always wanted. That is not true. That's what I wanted it to be. But she's not a villain. She's just like kind of smart. She's not a villain. She never becomes a villain. She gets like a villain name, but it's more like an office nickname. <laughs> she's, it's nothing. It's such a nothing thing. A lot of fours, which is interesting. I feel like even people who love this are acknowledging that like it's not that good. <laughs> Other than Justine. What do you have to say, Justine? And a specialty of data analysis and strategizing the downloads and blah, 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 blah. She said nothing. All of this is technically true, but bad. 
and Dr. Horrible vibes, except not fun. They were laughing. Sometimes I had to hold back and try to unleash my vast coil of villainy in tiny little bursts. But by the final action scene, it all came blubbing out in waves of gut-propelled dark joy. The end is not good. It goes on for way too long. It ends very abruptly. Like the the scene right the climax lasts forever, really unnecessarily. And then after that, the like wrap up, I don't think it's an epilogue, but like basically the epilogue just flies by and nothing is addressed. And it's left very open-ended. And it didn't have me bubbling out in waves of gut propelled dark joy. Everyone compares this to The Boys, which I have not seen. I think I remember seeing an ad for it, but if I wasn't gonna watch it before, I'm definitely not gonna watch it now. It's dark and cruel, and I appreciate that. It's not, it like thinks it's being edgy and like making a commentary on society, but nothing that we haven't already seen in a thousand comic book movies, you know? You know? I'm gonna go get another drink. It's good. It's good. Okay, where were we? As someone who has spent a lot of time with spread seeds myself, it can get mind and butt numbingly boring. Okay, Janet. I but Anna found a way to go with that even though she keeps finding herself up to her armpits and alligators. I mean, that's not true. The guy that she works for is sort of like a lizard man, but he's not an alligator. And that also to me implies like, you know, when they open the pit and there's alligators at the bottom and the rope's gonna burn in 30 seconds or whatever, and nothing like that happens. The book would have been better if that had happened. This was fun, false, not fun. A strange, <coughs> A strange world that made sense to me at any rate. It was just our world. It was the same as every superhero movie you've ever seen. Have you seen Spider-Man? Of course you have. Have you seen Batman? Of course you have. And you can imagine that world. <laughs> you're not special, Janet. <laughs> I'm sorry, Janet. I'm sure you're a lovely person. I'm just gonna move on. By the way, I am drinking tequila and pink lemonade. And it is lovely. Characterization made you feel deeply about the people and the issues addressed here. I think we've established that I'm a heartless monster, so I disagree. Maybe we should move on. <laughs> this one I'm excited for, Inspection by Josh Mallerman. I hated this book. This was a total cover buy for me. I should learn cover buys are never good. I give this two stars because there was like a part of it where it was good. Like, I think it says right in the description which I'm really upset about. Yeah, this, so this is a school for boys that have never heard of girls. Meanwhile, on the other side of the forest is a school for girls. Like, that was a huge twist for me when I read it. And that was the only part I liked was the girls because they weren't stupid and constantly talking about their boners. <sighs> the, the first, I always love, I feel like the first couple of ratings give you a really good sense of what the book is. Like if the top rating is a one star, even if the book has a really high rating, it's not gonna be very good. This one, the top three are a five, a two, and a five. So this book has no idea. Chris, blow me away. He liked Bird Box. Everyone did, blah, 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 blah. It, why is it just recapping? Just, just tell me what you thought. These are just quotes. Indeed, the children are not in cages in Mallerman's Eerie new book, but they're lab rats. Yeah. Except the science that they're doing sucks. It doesn't make any sense. Whatever. Uh, someone else likes Bird Box. Book is totally original. Is it? Young characters are identified as letters of the alphabet. Special words are capitalized to signify importance. I kept track of these in a notebook. You shouldn't have to do that. This isn't House of Leaves. You should be just able to read this semi-horror novel without having to take notes. This isn't lazy reading. Okay, like, it doesn't have to be lazy, but it has to be intuitive. 
Josh Mallerman is doing something here. That feels like the, it's something that, that's what this book is. It's a something. At its core, this is a cautionary tale. Yeah, don't kidnap children. Didn't think we needed a cautionary tale on that one, but okay. A lot of fours again. Raven, they're like, it's not bird box though. Engaging and suspenseful. I did not find it suspenseful. I found it very slow. And then the ending is just like out of nowhere. There were some creepy scenes, like there was a creepy basement, I think at one point, and that's good. That one bit of atmosphere was good and the rest of it was bad. Probably why it's a two star. One of the most unique and original books I've ever read, a solid five star. <coughs> oh wow, it's a, it gets stronger as you go. The same experiment is being held three miles away. No spoilers here, but things don't go according to plan. Yeah, because then there would be no book. Thanks, Tammy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm being so mean to you, but this is not a good book. It is not incredibly original, unique, or well written. Anyway, let's move on. What do we have next? The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. The most confounding book I have ever read. I wrote in my review, which is right here. It's brilliant. Simultaneously a 4.5 and one star. So we settled on two. Because it had such high highs and such low lows. First one, five, yeah, see? This is what I'm saying about these books. The first one is five stars and the second one is one star and the next one is five stars. So no one can make up their minds about this damn show. <sighs> Hating Game is the kind of book that anyone would enjoy. I am evidence to the contrary. Such an awesome read. I'm not exaggerating when I say this is one of the most entertaining enemies to lovers I've read so far. It was entertaining. I was very entertained. Lucy and Josh's story was fun, sweet, and so well done. Fun, yes. Sweet, absolutely not. Very abusive, very manipulative, and not good. Not good, not good. Told entirely from Lucy's POV. Again, romances should always be dual POV. Just a rule. She was a genuinely good person. Refreshing, relatable character. I'm sure many readers were love from the beginning. I feel like she was a pushover though. I feel like she didn't really have much personality aside from like being quirky. Like she grew up on a strawberry farm and she collects Smurfs. And those feel like just quirky for the sake of being quirky. Like you couldn't be bothered to give her an actual personality, so you gave her innate hobbies. Great. Witty banter between these two is fantastically done. That is true. That is what saved this book. It has excellent banter and I love banter. All right, Chelsea hit me. Reread, 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 reread. What is happening? Chelsea, are you okay? How many times have you read this book? A lot. A lot. Okay. Clearly you can't be trusted. Top three books of all time. My heart is full. I'm literally planning a tattoo. And my thing about this book is it was published in 2016, which like isn't that long ago. But I do feel like the rules or the conversation around harassment and consent has moved light years ahead in that amount of time. And I do kind of wonder if it's like a product of the time, but no, according to Chelsea, as of last year, this is still perfect. And according to Noel, it's tattoo worthy. I, no, no, no. No, all time favorites list. Books like this are exactly why I have stupidly high expectations of men. Books like this are the reason I have extremely low expectations of men. I expect them to behave like this in a manipulative and controlling way. We need to move on with the circle. I think we're more than 10 now, but we'll see which one of these get cut on the editing room, get left on the cutting room floor. I think that's the expression. Let's move on. 
The next one is Saint Anything by Sarah Dessen. This is, I think, the first book that I gave one star. And all that I remember about it is, like, the, the children should have just listened to their mom. And this whole thing would have been solved. It was the point where I was like, maybe, maybe I don't like young adults as much as I should. Maybe I should steer clear of that for a little bit. I, I still read young adult, I'm just more picky about it now. Has written something so powerful and heartfelt. And a dozen other adjectives. Oh, that's funny. Isn't a total romance? It's barely a romance. This one also has a very manipulative boy in it. All throughout the book, I felt the calming, comforting feels. How? This isn't a calming, comforting book. It's about like drug addiction and stuff. I think someone dies. This is not calming and comforting. Visual reaction. Don't, don't, don't bring Oprah into this. It felt similar to how one would have felt if you found out they were not gonna make the last Harry Potter movie. I don't people like the last Harry Potter movie. Oh, so many gifts, so many, okay, yeah, no, we gotta move on, I can't. Oh my gosh, so many, so many. This is how you can tell it's young adult. I amuse myself. Sydney feels visible compared to her accomplished older brother. Well, like, ugh. she has no personality. She has no personality. She has nothing, ugh. So frustrating, so frustrating. Okay, I need to move on. I keep talking forever, oh god. Okay. I keep forgetting what we're doing, and then I'm like, oh wow, I really don't like this book. Yeah, this whole point of the video. The video deal. I put some of my favorite poems in here. Ugh, this, this one. You've touched me without even touching me. Flawless, flawless. I'm so glad I paid hard-earned dollar cash monies for this book. Anyway, first one, one star, two stars, two stars, one star, one star. Okay, let's, it's true it's not good, but like, I feel bad, I feel bad. This thing did sell like millions of copies though, so maybe I can't feel that bad. Thomas, sell me on milk and honey. Milk and honey tore through my analytical mind and burrowed deep into my ultra sensitive soul. That was like a good self burn. It slayed all my emotions, my feminist desires, and my love for vulnerable writing. I know it was probably very vulnerable to write, but it felt like a parody. Like, like that feels like a poem I would write as a joke. You've touched me without even touching me. What is love, if not pain of time? A stunning collection of words made me look into the mirror, give myself a hug, and just really appreciate the person I was. This feel like people who were just having a bad day. We've all had a bad day and like watched a YouTube video and thought like, wow, this is the height of art. This just like really speaks to my soul. And then watched it the next day and been like, oh no, that's crap. <laughs> it's crap. I was clearly just like having a bad day. That's what this book is. That's what this book is. Jessica, you were just having a bad day. I'm not a huge poetry person, but I had to buy this book after hearing so many people talk about it. Same. Stupid people. Didn't disappoint. Poetry is so raw and beautiful that I related to so many of them that I kept going back to read me my favorites and highlight and tap them. I'm very happy for you. <laughs> poetry is very subjective. I totally get that. And I hate it. Okay, moving on to the Midnight Bargain. Well, at least I didn't DNF. Yep, that's, uh, that's the sentiment. A gorgeous book cover so appropriate for the beautiful fantasy romance novel it contains. Beautiful cover. Totally agree. Obsessed with the cover. Beautiful fantasy romance novel? Disagree. I don't think enough focus was paid to any aspect. Like, it was romance and it was fantasy. But I feel like it was more historical than anything. Beatrice Claiborne is a sorceress that learns to become a full trade magus. He needs a special grimoire to accomplish this. It, blah, blah. Like, I'm just glazing over. I don't know why I thought this would be a good book for me. I blend the pretty cover. That's obviously correct. Magical read well suited for fans of fantasy and light romances. I mean, I'm not a fan of fantasy. And I, what's a light romance? 
with the light on. Just one without a sex scene? I don't think there's a sex scene in this book. Came for the romance, stayed for the feminism. Oh. The feminism in this book is not subtle. Not even a little bit. It's it's on every single page. There are page long discussions of wow, the patriarchy is bad. And like I know. I know the patriarchy's bad. You don't have to spend four hundred pages convincing me. You just don't. I'm I'm on your team. All feminism all the way. But romance was also bad. Ugh, Lisa never ended up writing her full review, so. Must have purged it from her brain immediately, just like I did. I love how she ties relevant topics into her fantastical works. In this case, the deferment of a woman's power and opportunity in favor of their reproductivity, all wrapped up in respectability politics. I, it did all of those things. But I feel like those were all things that I knew already and I was already on your side and you didn't have to explain it to me. And there should have been like more plot rather than just like social discussions. I just think my hair looks really good. Anyway, what was I saying? Um, I'm already totally down for not deferring women's power and opportunity in favor of reprodu reproductivity. Great, tell me a story now. Maybe it felt preachy? Is that what I'm getting at? Unclear. This entire story reads like a horror novel instead of a fantasy one because the debutants are being brought to market for wealthy husbands and essentially sold for their magical bloodlines. I, no, no, nothing about this was horror. It was also very much just like a um, coming out. Is it called coming out? When you like, are of age and you have a party to be like, yeah, I'm ready to bone now. Who wants to be my husband? It was that. It wasn't a horror novel because women are bought for their bloodlines. It was like, I need to nab me a rich husband. No, not, not horror even a little bit. No one's even mentioning like the magical, uh, what is she, a lesser? minor spirit of fortune? A lesser spirit of fortune? Naughty? Na Naughty? I think her name is Naughty. She was great. She was the best part about this book. And no one's mentioning it. Naughty was a fun bit of plot. She just wasn't in it enough and also became kind of annoying after a while. If you need fantasy to convince you that feminism is good, great. Read this. He's the last two, I promise. The Wolf Night by William Shakespeare. Wow, I hated this book. I read it last year. I even got like a BBC production, full cast, beautiful British accents I could listen to. Still a one star. I have to pee. This is my favorite ridiculous show, so I'm beginning with a chart. It's not a good chart. I mean, it's probably accurate. I don't think literature should be explained with charts. L. So yeah, it's a really, really funny play and a play with lots of good puns. Were there lots of good puns? Were there? There was like one bit, oh, what was the, the thing? They were talking about how pirates were like salty thieves. Was that it? Saltwater thieves, yeah, which is excellent. I'm very down for saltwater thieves. Though I don't know if that qualifies as a pun. L. Shakespeare plays with the idea of both gender and romance as roles we perform and with love as something beyond gender or sexuality. Which like, yeah, he does. But in the end we double down to like only hetero love, wasn't gay the whole time, don't even worry about it. We were all straight the whole time. It was cool. No, make it gay. Make it gay. Keep it gay, keep it gay, keep it gay. Tara Twelve Night characters break their gendered roles in society. With women coming off as powerful and men coming off as incompetent. I don't... I don't think that's breaking gender roles. <laughs> Have you met a man? Wow, this is a really long review. Henry, is yours shorter? No, nope, it's, it's pretty long in just one paragraph. Mm. 
Mm, yeah, it's about gender, blah, 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 blah. Wow, that's a creepy picture. Thanks, I hate it. A Twelfth Night is the first Shakespeare play I've read. The first Shakespeare play I read, thank you for asking, was Midnight, Midnight? The one with the donkey. Midsummer Night's Dream. <laughs> I'm fine. I have to pee really bad. I've read Midsummer Night. No, I probably read one before that. But in high school, we did Midsummer Night's Dream in grade nine. And that was the first one that I had to like care about. And I didn't. I thought it was bad. I don't think I've liked any Shakespeare that I've read. <laughs> I didn't expect to like this. Most comedy is wasted on me. Well, that's good because it wasn't a comedy. The thing also in my review that I talk about is like most of the runtime is spent just bullying one of the side characters. Very little is spent on the romance between any of the pairs. It's perhaps the easiest of Shakespeare's plays to follow. I mean, I followed it. I just didn't like it. Let's move on. We only have one left. We only have a little bit of alcohol left. Oh, also I brought chips. If you haven't had these garden veggie chips, sour cream and onion flavored, you need to. They're the best thing ever. I prefer these to Pringles. And that's saying something. Oh, so good. Boy. Yum. The last book that we have is also a pretty recent read for me. Wow. That last bit is hitting. We'll be fine. 99% Mind by Sally Thorne. We have already seen Sally, Sally Thorne on this list. I'm happy she gets to be a repeat guest because I read this book because I didn't like The Hating Game and I heard people who liked The Hating Game didn't like this. And I thought, maybe this would be good. No, this is just Hating Game turned up to 11. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. Okay, let's see what other people have to say. First one, one star. Three stars, two stars. Yeah, people don't like this book. First five star. Read this twice in the same year and there will be many more rereads to come. Perfect story. Perfect. I have to pee. I'm sorry, I'll be back. Recording. Hopefully it's been recording the whole time. It would make me sad if it wasn't. This is so good. Okay, ready to go? Ready. We got an epilogue for the hating game. I am so emo. That is true. We did, we did get an epilogue for the hating game. Hello, sir. Hi. There's a hungry kitty. He gets fed in two hours. So he starts getting excited around now. So the epilogue for the hating game was, yes, bad. Um, Josh still sucks. Josh has not learned anything from the book. He's still the worst. And they like each other. It was such a nothing epilogue. Like it was really, I didn't like it. I can't stop eating these. I like and appreciated how different this book was from The Hating Him. Sorry, food in my mouth. I did like that she tried to do something very different. Uh, this woman is definitely not a pushover like Lucy was, but she uses the term alpha constantly. Constantly, I checked, I double checked. She uses the word alpha six times within the first six pages. It was so off-putting to me. I I can't even tell you because like the whole concept of alpha male too has been debunked by the guy who came up with it. And I feel like anyone who uses the term alpha is just like stupid. <laughs> I think it's so stupid. I think it's so stupid. I don't think Sally Thorne is actually a stupid person, but like the whole concept of alpha, I hate. I hate it with a fiery passion. Anyway, no one was talking about alpha. Let's move on. Uh, pedestal was high, I wanted obsession. Oh right, I already read that. Hating Gabe was instant satisfaction, 99% mine took its time. Everything about it was slow burn. Was it though? 
or did she see the guy and immediately be like, I want to get all up in that. Here's the latter. It made sense for the characters who were guarded and took time to open up. Like, they did. But then once they did, it was 0 to 60. Like, it was, it was nothing, 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 nothing. <laughs> Nudity. <laughs> I'm funny. <laughs> They took a lot of time and it was so frustrating. They both knew that the other one wanted it. So why are you wasting my time? Just get busy already. Oh, but, oh, wait. I was being taken on their journey and was allowed to witness and feel what the characters allowed me to. Usually this type of calculation in writing annoys me. What calculation? Having a plot? Going along a character's journey? Like a character-based book would? Okay. Granted, I had to get used to the writing at first. It wasn't necessarily the writing. Like, I felt the writing was very natural. I felt that it was very true to the characters. The characters felt real. It just felt like they sucked. It felt like they were the worst humans who had ever lived and ever would live. It felt like they were just gonna keep being reincarnated. This is reincarnated Hitler, is what I'm saying. Hey cat, can you not? <laughs> Look at him, what a freak. Okay, back to this very long review. Speaking of characters I adore, Darcy and Tom, my gosh. So I don't as written when it comes to characters that compliment each other so well, they didn't. They didn't compliment each other. They like openly were talking about how much they hated each other. Well, not that they hated each other, but how like, they were bad together. I got flushing light. Of course I do. Well, there's food in my mouth. I relate much more to these. This one star, this DNF. You feel right. I can't remember a single thing I genuinely liked about this book. Fair. Sally Thorne is a national treasure, and by nation I mean global. Because <laughs> I think she's Australian, which is interesting. I wonder if there's some sort of like Australian humor, like you know how there's British humor? I wonder if there's Australian humor and if I just don't get it. Sally Thorne is a wonderful storyteller. I mean, she told a story about two bad people. It was finished and published. It's more than I've done. So I agree. She has woven together an emotional story here and she died to get your charged strings. Okay, no, she hasn't. She hasn't, nothing was woven together. Everything was very choppy. Every chapter felt disconnected from the last. Stuff just kind of happened for no reason. That was cool. Uh, emotional? No, no. I'm a big crier and I was not emotional in this, even a little bit. Darcy returns home, blah, 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 blah. Oh yeah, so that's another thing. So this is about Darcy living in her grandmother's house that's getting renovated. And the grandmother sounded like a great character. I don't understand why we didn't have flashbacks. This book was begging for flashbacks because the two leads are childhood best friends. And sometimes they would talk about like, hey, remember when we were young and we did that thing? Just give me the scene. Just write that scene. Don't give it to me from these adults perspective, like do it. And the grandma was also a great character, but she was dead the whole time. I would have loved to get some of her in this book. Disappointment. Book was narrated. I did listen to the audiobook and it was fine. I mean, as fine as a one star book can be. There isn't a lot that's surprising in 99% mine, but I couldn't tear myself away from it. That's not a problem. I don't mind a romance that's predictable. I do mind a romance where I hate both of the characters and I hate them together. In a romance, you have to be able to root for the couple. Hot take. I guess that's it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this wasn't too messy. I'm sure it was, but this is a trend that I love seeing and I love doing it. And so hopefully I read some more bad books so I can do this again in the future. It's a weird thing to hope, but I am hoping for it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in my next video. Bye.